Hello everyone and welcome to another comp space tutorial. Uh, my name is Raul and today we'll be talking about how to measure elapsed time in your C++ code. So oftentimes you want to quantify the improvements that you've made to your code and this elapsed time is a metric that you can use to show the performance improvements of your code. So uh, in order to do this we're going to be using the chrono header which is only available after the C++11 release. So if you have a previous release on your computer, I'm sorry, but this will not work. And this video will probably not be helpful to you. Um, so the first thing I did was I included the chrono uh, header. And then um, the next thing is we would essentially go in and say, okay, computer, what is the time when I want the timer to start? And then you do some code, and then when the you were ready for the timer to end, you get the time at that point, and then you find the difference in time, and you output that value. So uh, in order to determine the time using this chrono header, um, there are three different types of clocks that can be used. So the three clocks are the system clock, the high resolution clock, and the steady clock. So the system clock is the real time clock that's used by the computer. The high resolution clock essentially refers to uh, the smallest tick or increment that the computer can actually measure. So it's a quantification of that as your tick. And then the steady clock refers to a monotonic clock that's used by the computer that uh, is never adjusted by the computer. So it should be, in theory, the steadiest. That's why it's called the steady clock. So uh, the first thing we said we would do is we are going to get the start time. Okay, so before we do anything. So to do that, we define a variable called start. Um, and then we type in the standard library, chrono, steady clock. And then we use the function called now. Okay, so that essentially gets the time right now or when the code is running. So in the next step, we would run some code. Then we would get the end time and find the difference. And then we would output. OK, so for the random code, we're just going to output nothing. Uh, let's see, 10 million times. So int i equals 0, i is less than 1 e to the 7th, um, and then i plus plus, okay, and then we would just do, I'll use a simple cout command and have nothing coming out. Okay, so basically we're just telling the computer to output stuff this many times, and um, it's just to get the point across. Okay, so then in the next step, we'll use the same uh, or a similar command to define an end variable. Okay, and we'll grab the time at that point in time. And then finally, we would look at the, uh, the difference between the start and the end time. So in order to do that, we use the following command. So I'll define a variable called uh, elapsed time. Okay, and that is equal to, um, let's see, std chrono, and then we use this thing called duration cast. Okay, and then you have to specify the uh, type of number that you want to be returned to you. So we're going to use nanoseconds uh, to get the value. So nanoseconds, let me close that bracket. Uh, then we calculate n minus start, and then we use the function count, and then we end that. So that's a lot, but basically you get the gist of it. We're just basically determining the time difference between when we started and when we ended. Okay, and then the last part is we're going to, oh, sorry, we're going to output our value. So last time. And say we want to output it in seconds. So remember here, I told you that these are in nanosecond is what's going to be returned. 
uh, because we specified that here and we could use milliseconds or uh, microseconds if you wanted. Um, so we have to convert from nanoseconds in order to, or into seconds. So to do that, we do elapsed time NS divided by one e to the ninth. And I'll do, and I'll end the line so that it's easier to see. And then in my code, I just have pause or system pause in order to pause everything before the debugger ends and return zero. So I'm going to press F5 and it's going to run. Uh, and let's see what happens. It's actually on the other screen. I got to drag it over here and it's running and it should be done soon. Okay. So the elapsed time was five seconds and 5.66 seconds. Okay. So if we change the amount of times, we output nothing. So let's go with six and I run it again and I drag it over here and it actually finished before I even was able to drag it over, but we got 0.72 seconds on this run. So uh, you get the gist of it. Um, this could be a lot more complex than you know just outputting nothing, uh, but you could time your code and get those values, make some changes, and then see how that affects the time that it takes your code to finish. So that was a pretty long-winded way of explaining how this works. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, please let us know if you guys think there's anything that we left out. Uh, any way that we can improve. Uh, we're always looking forward to improving. So um, we hope you guys enjoyed our video. Please make sure you subscribe if you liked it or if you didn't, tell us why not. Uh, give it a thumbs up uh, and even check out our website. This stuff is going to be documented on our website. Um, so if you guys don't want to type it all out, we understand there'll be a link in the comment section uh, of this video. So thanks a lot and we'll see you guys next time.